Hey DJs, did you know you can control your lighting with the RAIN 4? Well you can, and I'm gonna show you how. So on the RAIN 4, there is a user-defined pad mode that you can MIDI map to whatever you want. And to get to that, all you have to do is hold Shift and press the Hot Cue button, or pad mode selection button. And that will open up a MIDI mappable mode. So you've got eight pads you can MIDI map, but you can also MIDI map the parameter buttons. So really that's 10 pads or buttons that you can map in this custom MIDI map mode. So in this video, I wanted to show you how you can MIDI map those to control some sound switch cues and buttons and overrides so that when you're DJing with Serato, uh, you don't have to navigate in and out of Serato and sound switch to activate the override controls. Because how sound switch works, it'll run in the background with Serato, so you have two programs open. So when you're DJing, sound switch will snap the automated light show to the beat grids of whatever you're playing. So it would just kind of follow along and go through the auto loops, which are different sequences of lighting and color uh, within the sound switch program. So normally, if you just wanna let that ride, you're fine, you don't need to access override controls, but you may want to jump over to sound switch normally and either pause the show so the lights stop flashing for maybe like a slow dance or something like that. You may wanna do an override like a strobe or a blackout, or you may just wanna access some of the static looks, which are basically lighting combinations like predefined that you can predefine, or in this case, I'm using a Chave gig bar move there is a sound switch project already made that has all those static looks predefined. So I'll show you what that looks like. So to grab that project file, we're gonna go to soundswitch.com. We're gonna scroll down. And if you click the what's new in version 2.7 button, it'll take you to a page where you can scroll down until you see the pre-built gig bar move project. So there's a button there, just click that and it'll download the project. I've already downloaded this a few times, so the file will look a little different on my computer. But uh, open up your finder, go to your downloads, and unzip the folder. And then you'll see on mine, I've, I've been playing around with it for a while, so I've got multiple instances. So I'm just gonna use the original one in this example. So if you're to download the zip file and extract it for the first time, you're gonna see this. It's a gig bar move. Uh, sound switch project. That's the dot S S P R O J. So I'm going to open up a new finder window. What we need to do, we're going to run sound switch on the laptop along with Serato. So what I'm going to do is open a new finder window and we have to drag this project over to the sound switch location. So that is going to be in uh, your personal, you know, profile on your computer and it's in music. So if you go to music, do a little drop down, and there is a sound switch folder right here. So if I'm gonna open the sound switch folder, and these are all the sound switch projects. I have a few different ones on the laptop, but I'm going to drag this one, this new one over, just as it is. So make sure it's inside that sound switch project. So what we're doing with that is when we connect to the laptop and open sound switch, we're gonna pick this project so that it knows all the addresses and all the lighting that's already included on the gig bar move. So the gig bar move does need to be, basically it's DMX default is the basic setting to access this profile. And that is 35 channel mode and it needs to be DMX address one. So if you power on your gig bar move for the first time, it defaults to like an auto program. As soon as you navigate in the menu on the gig bar to the DMX profile, pretty much that's it. It's set to 35 channel mode and the address is set to one. And that's where it needs to be for this uh, pre-built project to work. And if you have two gig bar moves and you want them to both be controlled by the project, you can both address them as one. So uh, up next, we're gonna connect. And to make this whole thing work, we need a sound switch dongle. Uh, this is a micro DMX dongle. Uh, you can get those on the sound switch website. You can find those on the music store. You can find those in various places. So I believe now they're $39. And this is your gateway to DMX control with sound switch. You can also get a control one, which is a box that has all the override controls built in. But if you just want to, you know, use this method of controlling it with your, your MIDI mapping and the Rain 4, you just need this guy. So we're already connected to the uh, 
laptop with the RAIN 4. Now I'm going to connect uh, the sound switch dongle to the laptop and to the the Shave gig bar move. So I have the DMX cable already hooked up to the gig bar move. And that's right here. So I'm just going to connect. And then I just need to plug that into an open port on the laptop. Okay, so we're gonna minimize this. I'm gonna head over, we're gonna open up sound switch. And as that opens up, it may start triggering the lighting, but no worries. We're gonna kind of get to a point where we have control over it. So we'll just open it up. Uh, we're gonna click perform. And then I wanna open my project. And so I click file, open project, and then I'm gonna select that gig bar move project. And then once I do this going forward, it should be selectable when I start up sound switch. So you can see the lights kind of snap to a position and stop going crazy so they recognize the project. And so I'm gonna to connect to it. And this is the uh, performance you know, screen and it has all these override controls that we can mini map. But just to kind of show you uh, what SoundSwitch is all about, in case you don't know, if I were to get over to um, Serato and play a track. So right now it's just going through these auto loops. It's, it's going to the beat of the music and kind of doing its thing. And you could just do that all night if you wanted to. But what we want to do is have some control over this using the um, the mini mapping pad mode. So if I go back over to sound switch and I click the MIDI mode, these are your overrides. And so normally if I click one, like all green, you know, these are the color overrides. I can change color. Um, there is a, you know, a strobe and a blackout. Um, and what's really cool with that project for gig bar, the gig bar move is these static looks are all predetermined. So on this screen, all of these buttons are basically a predetermined and pre-designed light show. So for example, purple with the Derby's orange. So that creates a purple color with the UV and Derby's are orange. Let's see, blue slow rotation. That's there. And what I think is actually uh, very useful is that there is a laser off override that you can layer on top of any other you know, static look or just have it when there's an auto loop playing you don't want the laser on you can click that laser off so we have tons of patterns to choose from the only problem is you have to navigate in and out of serato and sound switch to, to activate those well with the rain 4 in that pad mode we can mini map those so that when we're performing on the rain 4 we can have serato open and then we can just navigate to the custom pad mode and activate from there without switching screens on the laptop. So I'm gonna show you how to do that. First, one of the coolest things I like about the, the pad mode, I know it's silly, but I like that the fact you don't just get the eight pads, you get these parameter uh, buttons as well. And so to me, what makes the most sense for that is, as I navigate back to the, the screen there, a play pause button. So sometimes, Again, you might not want like such a crazy show going on all the time, especially if it's like a slower dance or something like that, or there's like a, a formal event you're announcing at a gig. You don't want the lights going crazy, you want them paused. So if I were to click play pause, the movement stops, everything stops, except for that laser. I don't know why that is, if that's a limitation of the gig bar move or what, but that's why that static look override is there. And I'll show you how to, turn, to map that and turn that off. But first, let's map the play pause. So mini mapping is really straightforward with this. You just right click and you select map. And then when that's, you know, flashing red, that means it's ready to be triggered. So I'm gonna do my play pause mapped to the right parameter button. So then I can just touch that to pause, touch it again to play. And then what makes the most sense to me is that left parameter button that I can map to do a blackout on that. So I'm just gonna right click on that button. It's gonna flash red. I'm just gonna tap the left parameter button and that's my blackout button. So now I got blackout, I got play pause. So pretty cool. Uh, now you can map the other eight pads however you like. One of the first things I would map would be turning off that laser. 
So I'm gonna go up here, right click that and map that. I think maybe I would just do the whatever button I want, but I'm gonna do the one closest to the parameter button so I can kind of keep that in mind. So now I know laser off. So I should be able, once the show's going, hit that, laser goes off. And that can be kind of layered over the top over any static look. So at any point you want the laser off, you just tap that and laser's off. So then from there, it's just mapping all the other buttons that you want. Purple, ours pink, I'll put that one here. Uh, pink, derby's blue, you know I could put that one here. So yeah, so there's one of the static looks. There's another static look, laser on, laser off. You know, like I said, you got blackout, on blackout, and you got your pause. So like everything you need, you can just control from here. Let's look at just a few more. Uh, only laser on green. You know, that's one maybe we can map that one and put it below the laser off one. So then I can just say, okay, laser, let's start our show. Laser off, laser only on green. So then I have some options there. And then of course, we can go back. We can map any of these that we want to any of these buttons. So we have eight. And so just try to think of a way to organize them. Like if you want static colors on top, you can do that. If you want static looks on the bottom, go that route. Or if you want to map them, just however makes sense to you so you can remember them. So again, laser off, on, green only. And you know, if I want to probably do a strobe somewhere in there. So I'm gonna you know, map my strobe maybe to this guy right here. Strobe's on or off. Blackout. Green laser only, everything else goes off. Off, turn the laser off, strobe. Just so many options you can do and you can map any of this stuff. And I, I won't show you in this video, but you can also go through sound switch and change these points where your moving heads hit. So. Those are your position overrides. I will do maybe another video on that. But when you set up at a gig, you can you know first set your position overrides. So like dance floor, you know spotlight dances, cake cutting, things like that. So when they're going through the auto loops to the track, they uh, will snap to those key areas and not just random spots. But that's a whole other video. All I wanted to get across and show you is that you can map this to your you know rain four. And it's easy to get in and out of that mode. Shift, pitch, play, or I mean, sorry, shift, hot, Q, And then, yeah, you have your controls right here. So that's how you mini map your sound switch lighting to your Rain 4. And don't forget, you can grab that Chave Gig Bar Move project with all these static looks pre-completed and pre-filled out on soundswitch.com. You're gonna need that sound switch dongle. And yeah, just mini map. And the nice thing is, it saves it to sound switch. So when you, you know, fire up your Rain 4 again, and you fire up Serato, and you fire up sound switch, you don't have to remap anything. So once you get it the way you like it, it stays that way the entire time. And if you want to start all over, and I'll erase it from this one, you can go up to MIDI and clear all mappings. So then we are back to nothing being mapped. So that's how you do it.